Uh, but we've got more food. Uh, it's filet and another pepper sauce. Um, and we've also got green bean tempura, you know, because you go from classic French cooking to P.F. Chang's <laughs> appetizers. I mean, what is going on here with this fucking meal? I want to. It's all up, over the map. I op- want to open up a new new rap themed steak restaurant and call it Hip Hop Filet. Hey, so Dylan, uh, yeah. I- Welcome aboard another brand spanking new episode of another Below Deck Sailing Yacht Podcast. My name is Dylan. I'm saddled up next to one real Nicholas Davis having trouble with his cans. It's hurting me. Ahoy, mateys. Pat. Permission to come Producer aboard. Producer podcast over there. Permission granted. Sup. Wow. Are you okay? <clears throat> Sup. Nick, how are the numbers? Are we growing? I can't tell. I don't look anymore. This show, it's gangbusters. Okay. I feel like we're about to uh, pass Call Her Daddy, and it's crazy yeah. considering we're so specific to Below Deck. Yep. Mm. How'd we do it? We don't know, but we'll just keep trucking along. Pat, sup? Hey, all right. So I keep saying that because we have public service. Yes, 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 yes. I, that's why I was kind of bringing up the numbers. Uh, so I am uh, going to officially announce that the Another Podcast Network We'll be uh, having its first live show as a, a guest panelist. I don't know if we You know, I was at a wedding one time and the idiot DJ kept hitting that fucking button every four seconds. It drove me mad. Well, he was signifying that it was hype. Then. Yeah, he was signifying that it was a good time. And that'd have to be hyperbolic, right? Because if he was doing that every four seconds, he would have been shot on sight by somebody <laughs> after a while. Uh, okay, so live show. Live is, show. is happening. That's so exciting, so actually. with friend of the show, Kate Casey. She's headlining, but we're coming on. We're going to do panel. Uh, she's going to sell a bunch of different type of ticket tiers over there. But one of them is like this VIP thing where you hang out after the show. You get to mix it up. Up with her, oh, God. which means you get to mix it up with us too. So not only we're going to make you laugh for a half hour or so on stage, but then hang out and meet us in person for the first time. It's fun. These Oof. are fun things to do. Can you mention that thing that you mentioned to me off there? Another kind of attraction for it? Is that she, not set in stone? It's not set in stone. So Kate didn't want me to say it yet, I but she's working meet on it. Our fans, but I don't want to be subjected to yucking it up with the rest of the people. I, you know, I, I mean, we talked about it on, a, on another podcast show. I don't like small talk. Okay. Dylan, don't worry about it. The people who don't know who you are are just as not interested in talking to you. Well, once we light up the stage at the Irvine Improv July 13th, people are going to be like, whoa, who are you July guys? 13th. I take my back. Yeah, I July- July 13th at the Irvine Improv. You just need to go to improv.com because there's a bunch of them. And you want to look for the shows for the Irvine Improv. And then Kate Casey has a couple different uh, packages you can buy and will be there. And I'm not allowed to say it yet, but potentially someone that used to be really popular cast member on Orange County Housewives. Speaking of Housewives, Mm -hmm. Uh, another beloved. uh, Go ahead. uh, Just, I mean... I'm like in my head. I'm I'm a little like, oh god, what am I going to talk about? It's like kind of a w- weird crowd. Like they don't watch MMA. I would like to challenge this o- R H O C cast member to a battle of wits at some point, if yeah. that is possible. Uh, why don't we <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> try to fight her? Uh-huh. <clears throat> battle of wits, Dylan. You know what I'm saying, don't be a coward. Just fucking fight her. I feel like Pat's not going to suggest that to Kate Casey, so I will have to suggest. No, that to I Kate won't. Casey. But so go go over there. Don't wait because I already talked to Kate. She's already sold half the room out in a week. Okay. So go buy your tickets so you can see us live. And speaking of uh, special guest housewives, Sugui, we are covering the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills at Patreon.com/slash Another Podcast Network. What a show it has been. If you're a Real Housewives fan, if you want to support us, if for some reason you have not scrounged together 500 cents every month to support us monetarily in the fashion that makes us love you the most, go do it! Because there's below deck (laughs) down under there, the worst person of all time, Chef Ryan, Pizza Rat, Philly Trash Ryan, is on that show, as well as Hot Captain. Go to patreon.com slash another podcast network. What about that uh, other perk we all kind of talked about this weekend? Hit it, hit it, Nikki. Oh, love that. Thank you. And and uh, just chill, okay? We got some announcements. We're going to get to the show. These are all exciting opportunities for you guys, so I don't know why anybody would be complaining. Maybe I'm projecting, but I can feel it in their cars and stuff. Just take a chill. 
So a lot of people are grateful all the amazing products we inform them about and offer them discounts on. Dame, Magic Mind, BetterHelp, Rothy's, all that stuff. But Green not, Chef, don't sleep on that. Not everybody loves it. Some people, uh, shockingly enough, only come here to listen to us talk about Below Deck. Very strange. And uh, you now are afforded that opportunity instead of the seven to eight minutes of ads we sometimes have in a full show. It's not that heavy this night, don't worry. But if you sign up for our $10 tier at patreon.com slash another podcast network, you will officially get all our shows audio on one feed ad free. We've heard the yipperin'. We've heard the yammerin'. We're listening to you, okay? No ads. 10 bucks a month. Go check it out. More work for Dylan. You'll get all the video, too. (laughs) All the video, the PMZ. Yeah, PMZ. (laughs) What? Hey, snoot face. I was going to get there. There's also PMZ, which stands for Patrick MZ. Bum, bum, bum. bum. Can we get in the show? Yeah. Right. Bum, bum, bum is eerily similar to... Uh, well, it's a, an exciting night. For us. I mean, I fucking hated this episode. But, oh, you're getting uh, into oh, it. Why don't you start get, then? Let's get into... Okay, I'll, I'll start. So many going about montages. That's how you know an episode is bad. When they're just... You find yourself with two to th- like two to three minute spells, and you're in the middle, and you're just like, they're just doing stuff. They're yeah. just washing windows Do- and putting on wigs and walking. There's nothing Sorry to happening. interrupt your knots. I mean, uh, in a major way. Does Bravo ever have to explain to the people that would be advertising on a particular episode what happens? Like, if it was an episode of Matlock or something, like, yeah. I didn't understand why a spaghetti company would want to pay for it. Like, what happens in the episode? Oh, well, this guy's going around. He's killing hookers. Whoa. Uh, what happens? Well, we find the guy, but it's pretty creepy. Wow, that sounds good. All right, I'll buy a, uh, do an ad buy for spaghetti. Yeah, all you're right. not aging yourself. No, uh, not at all, Dylan. What are you talking about? And then this fucking show. She all was right. a hawker. <laughs> That's Matt Locke. Sorry to interrupt your interruption of my thoughts and thoughts. I I hand it back to you. Do you? Yes. But I will. But you it. didn't finish your point. Oh. I'll finish it for him. Imagine if the ad advertiser calls up the producers of Matt Locke and they're like, "What happens this week?" And they're like, "Nothing." <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't think those ad- ad- advertisers buy that space. They're not going to want to buy that space. They'd much rather have their product associated with horror murder than boring, boring television. And then the producers are like, oh, wait, did we say nothing? A 10-course meal. Which was beautiful, but again... Has that, nothing to do with Matlock. This will end my thoughts and pots. Below Deck, you need to keep hiring bad chefs, okay? Because it's just... It, Dilly can't... But it doesn't have a big bull pit if these guys are just really good at cooking. There's nothing entertaining about it. They're just eating good food. Two of those courses were steak, though. You're going to let them have it for that, aren't <clears> you? Oh, yeah. I mean, some of it was Beverly Hills trough food. But, you know, boring. Ten pots. Whoever. I concur for the most part. I mean, nothing. There's some days, like, I have more time than others when I'm about to watch these shows. And, like, once this was released, I was ready. I was ready to sit down there and take notes. And I'm just open there, taping my eyes open, ready to get every single detail. Yeah. And nothing happened. Yeah. Except that Scarlett really wants some TV time, making out with Gary in the laundry room, getting ahead of myself. But other than that, pretty boring. Glenn, I did see, like... Seeing him get excited about racing 12 knots. He's so cute when he's excited. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that, Nick. I had an existential thought while watching this particular episode. My two and a half year old was playing with her toys by my side. I was watching this episode and I was questioning, why am I doing this? Yeah. I should be playing with my daughter. Right. Yeah. This was horrible. Yeah. Um, here's the other thing. Uh, the guests are perfectly nice. Now we had... Hang on a second. Now, now you've just puckered Nick up a little bit because in Nick... This is a dream job, you know? Why would you look upon your little daughter and, and regret doing this, right? Am I right? Uh, yeah. I mean, she's right. <laughs> she's there. The fact that, right. I mean, you can see her. I feel like yeah. it's best both worlds. What are you going to, are you going to get on the ground and f- like not have any object permanence with her? Like, chill the fuck out, man. This is fun. But what a terrible episode. Go terrible. ahead, Pat. Okay. Imagine um, Pat trying to weave a narrative with these toys and her just being like, Meh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, ice get- cream, ice cream. <laughs> the no, ge- Ellie. The guests are perfectly nice. Yeah. And quit touching my stuff, Ellie, my equipment. Their I palettes are obviously Florida. Their tongues are from Florida. Because they're, they're very trash. They're very nice, but they're also very boring. So nothing happened there. But I did find myself noticing something that hadn't really caught my eye before. And you know I'm a detailed motherfucker. They never pretend that Colin has a job. No. 
<laughs> no. No, Has I, he he's lifted <laughs> a finger there. on this boat in 13 episodes? There's a shot of him just sorting what I assume to be like like drill bit parts. Like he's just like going through. Uh, I'm not very handy, so I don't know what you call it. <laughs> That's probably things. just some B roll. Too. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. hey, uh, Colin, uh, that drawer full of uh, screws and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Just start rifling through them uh, like you're doing something. This one doesn't go here. <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot to say about the other uh, members of the crew. Listen, we need Sea Dog, though. He's a fire starter, okay? He's a shit stirrer. I think too many people said, hey, I'd like that guy from last season, and now they don't really have anything for him to do. Well, uh, case case in point, bad episode. We don't get enough Sea Dog, okay? We need a night out. We need a night out with Gary and Scarlett. We need to see what Daisy's going to do. We need to see what Ashley's going to do. And we need to see. Do you see... want my knots? Yeah. Zero. Nice. All right, let's get into it. Um,. So last we left off, Ashley was vomiting up the pasta that she had guzzled down and was saying that um, knowing that Scarlet has no experience has given her life. What an evil creature. Um, and Daisy was fed up with it, and she did her best to implore upon this young sea rat that she was missing the team spirit of the job. But before we get into any of it, let's take a quick break. To get to the preference sheet meeting from the week before. From the week before. This is where, uh, Nick, you seem very nervous. Oh, no. <laughs> Holy fuck. I, he's, I haven't <laughs> seen that face on him before. No, 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 no. See, what, uh, what, what we're going to do now is... He's do? scrambling. He looks like he wants to kill a chicken with a bone. This is a perfect time to talk about why you need Magic Mind, right? Because Magic Mind, if ingested once each and every day, will give you the clarity that Nick is so lacking in this moment. Last week, we did say that we were going to begin this episode with the preference sheet meeting, and I fear now that Nick is going to pull up the preference sheet meeting. Now, it's okay, thank God. But if you go to magicbind.co and enter in promo code Glenn, you will get 25% off, and these things will not happen. You will have a superhuman clarity, a zen hum, as we've talked about so often, because of the changa, because of the matcha and the echinacea. Go to magicmind.co, enter in promo code Glenn to get 25% off. I uh, uh, Just to remind the audience, I, don't, I hate to wear down a, an old bit, but uh, last week, that road rage incident, yeah. perhaps that was inappropriate. The guy pissed me <laughs> off. I took a, a swig in my magic mind. I threw his own car at him. Right, right. He was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, you guys didn't know. I actually had this plan the whole time. I'm trying to bring in a special guest for the preference sheet meeting. That's charter guest Jess Samato. Oh, nice. I love Jess. I, She's definitely not answering. I did talk a little smack what, about her. What a horrible idea. What if she answered, though? What a horrible you idea. You have her number, huh? We're going uh, no, it's, to, fa it's Instagram. But the last message, uh, she had messaged me, and I left her on red, and she said, Instagram. She, she, she said, is the podcast available yet? Two years ago. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> if you have magic mind, you will not, uh, oh, what uh, essentially amounts to a drunk dial. This is a, <laughs> this is a panic dial, people, in the middle of, uh, middle of our show. And they will not answer. So go to magicmind.co, enter in promo code Glenn. Shame on you. Shame on you. All right. Well, we're going to push this uh, preference sheet meeting back two weeks, and I'm going to have the best one ever. Might have to go back to back. I'm Excellent. very excited. So um, let's get into it. They swap out the third stew with junior stew on the Chiron. Saw that. I mean, what just brutal move from, mm -hmm. from production. <laughs> um, and then we move on to more issues with the Sea Rats. Barnables is told that he is on nights, and he is not happy. He says, and I quote, wouldn't you want the fun, exciting guy working during the day so you can accrue more tips? Mm. Episode two or three, and we've got his first cringe pickup. You know, I don't know what they're they're plowing these kids with over at that fucking shitty hotel down the street. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. I, I agree with him. I find Sideshow Bob pretty fun. Right. And mm -hmm. I think if communication was uh, better on this boat, they could have worked this out, the deck team. Like, why the fuck are we doing this? Yeah. 
Wow. Well, he wants he doesn't want to uh, uh, do the night shifts because all the camera people are asleep. I think he's a thirsty whore. Oh, yeah. he's. Okay. I mean, he's already said he wants to siphon rich people's money. And I think being famous, it will help him do that. Or at least he believes so. Well, I think, you know, he's on to something. <laughs> but we're going to move on to something else. And that's Gary moseying on into the bedrooms to try to procure himself. What? What happened to your tongue there? He's trying to procure himself a threesome. Um, well, hey, suck bag, don't you have work to do? My God, one track with this dude. Now, to be fair to him, he was attempting to smooth things over with Ashley, but you are correct. He did it in the only way a sea rat can uh, to uh, uh, propose a threesome. And if they were game, he would. He's like a brilliant general. He does not make an action unless there are multiple positive outcomes for him at the end of that road. You know, mm. that's a great point. Yeah. Every, every move he made, it, he was like he was playing chess with the entire yeah. boat, and they didn't realize it. The men want to be him. The women want to be with him. Yeah, he's like George Washington of sea rats. Now, there's a guy who takes magic mind. Absolutely. So Scarlett says that she understands the thing with Ashley and doesn't want any drama. Nick laugh. <laughs> oh man, is she by the end of it, she goes through a very, very sad metamorphosis into someone who's viewing the other women as bitch competition. You know, it's really I we'll talk about it, but I don't know what kind of spell he has cast on these people. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So uh, we get a little Barnaby weird one rivalry. This is not a storyline that's going anywhere. We got three I don't episodes want left, to talk Bravo. about it. We got three episodes left. Oh, Bravo. see, this was the only exciting part for me. I want them to have a sitcom. The odd couple. Well, it's a weird couple. It's going to amount to nothing. And the first chunk of this episode is really just techno music and work. And no one fucking wants to see that <laughs> shit. So um, let's move on to Gary being a central casting sexual predator once again. Uh, he shaves a rapey mustache for the role and then heads down to hug Scarlet from the back. I mean, he's known this girl for 48 hours. This is such an intimate embrace. Dylan, this was a great example of once again, the sexual harassment in the workplace is truly contingent on whether or not the other person is in fact attracted back to you. Yes. Because he grabbed her from behind and kissed her neck. Yeah. And thank God for him. She seemed into it. I know. Can you imagine if she wasn't? Can you imagine if Barnaby did this? Uh, Pat, you were you were quite the cop. How about Adrian? We've we've heard many years like stories. You <laughs> like my meat? Uh, we've heard many years stories of of seducing women. Was this type of aggressive physical contact? I feel like that's not really your mo. Never. Yeah, I, you, I would feel so uncomfortable doing that. It's uh, an insane maneuver. Oftentimes, brave generals are uh, are doubted by their cadets, their squads, but they know the right move. He read the room. And he went up from behind and fucking hugged her. This was so weird. But he ultimately claims his prize. After trying to kiss her no less than 15 times, he walks away, does a uh, Homer's dad, and walks right back into the laundry room and gets that smooch. But this is what happens when people are victims of crimes. They end up perpetuating that crime on other people. And mm -hmm. let's not forget he was raped by Ashley. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a really, really good point. Uh, Gary says, I don't know what is so attracted, uh, attractive about Scarlett. I just I can't put my finger on it. Oh, we can. She's a woman. And she's trapped in here with you. Uh, Sheree, when I was watching, she yelled at the TV, she's got a pussy. She <laughs> yeah. thinks she's a podcaster right. now. What, what a <laughs> hacky joke, Sheree. I have been trying to put my finger on who Scarlett reminds me of since she's walked aboard this a vessel and I just put my finger on it. It is uh, E's girlfriend in the first episode of Entourage, Kristen. She looks exactly like it. I'll have a side by side for you guys later. Thank God for that because I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Uh, Scarlett says there are sparks between her and Gary. Nick, <laughs> laugh. <laughs> he is never going to speak to you soon. Um, so let's get to our buddies coming aboard. Uh, who are these chicks again? I forget. I Jess is her Jess name? is from Jersey or New York, I think. Uh, uh, she, yeah, she, she, 
she's from someplace east and that's what gives her that filthy accent but they were guests right. of erica rose yeah. right, right, right. for trump last time um damn jess, near ruined the whole vacay jess had that fire line probably the reason she was invited back uh what kind of mirrors do you have in your house to the tatas for trump lady who said she was the most beautiful and that's why oh right right her. right 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 um making up for my lack of preference no know. that's okay still trap baby they says the chef is the hottest thing they've ever seen people are really into that latin dick man uh, he is just oh, yes he's yes. blowing the doors off people left well, i think and right. it helps that he can cook that's very uh that's like a foreplay for women you know and you cookie can, cook can first up as a chicken bacon fig with uh pear and white wine reduction nice little taste treat to kick things off 70 pounds so uh marcos has a tough uh, task ahead of him he has to make a shellfish free gluten-free and dairy free dinner something that he is up to the task to do if you're not watching down under reminder we're covering that at patreon.com slash another podcast network and if chef ryan was handed a putt this tough a triple breaker so to speak he would have cried about his late father while stabbing the guest that requested it okay so you got to get over and hear us break that down because he's a bad chef and that's more fun for everyone mm -hmm. so uh let's get to the rope swing uh one of the highlights the of the boom episode. swing what, the boom swing? I believe they refer to it as boom swing. Oh, boom swing. Yeah, yeah by the way, Dylan, I, I want to tell you how much I've evolved as a comic uh, comic uh, podcaster. Oh. I'd written now, this Now, quick joke. question. Was genius on the tongue? No. Okay. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I've grown so much because I started, like, r jotting down some potential jokes. You know, the, the Jennifer girl and her landing and, yeah. it, 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 like, causing Should we a go tsunami. Through, should we go through some of the ones that didn't make the cut? Oh, that definitely didn't. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you've grown, yeah. Because oh, I would wow. never tell, uh, make a joke about that. You know, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fat joke. It's yeah. cheap. I, I don't think this very there, cheap. I don't think there was really anything to joke about in this instance. I just, I'm, I'm shocked a workplace would invite this much liability. There's no way that doesn't go poorly. I'm, I'm ha just happy she cleared the boat. A hundred percent for well, real. A couple things. The rope is not up to snuff. That looks like a creek rope. That looks like something that's hanging off of some willow somewhere that is going to snap and hurt a child very, very soon. Um, but it was holding up this woman. And I thought, Barely. <laughs> Pat, it's cheap, though. It's cheap, though, and it's hurtful, though, right? You're right. So I thought what Nick feared was going to happen, that she, <laughs> I mean... I thought she was going to not make it. I thought she was going to barely clear the roof and probably fold herself on the railing. You could you could hear the ghosts of Greg Lugana saying, "Don't, yeah, don't." Yeah. But I mean, we'll feel bad for the railing too. You know, to take that whole thing down, <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> so, um, rule of three, he did it. So, <laughs> what a fall, though. I mean, I felt like Sean William Scott when. Will Ferrell takes that dart in the neck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and uh, we, we, just, awesome. we just want to take a minute, all of us, from the bottom <laughs> of our hearts to thank Jess for giving us the one moment we right. can mine some comedy out of <laughs> yeah, from this thank episode. Yeah, God. So many. You're a hero. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's get to a meanwhile. Meanwhile. Uh, Scarlett is struggling with forks. One of the primaries is struggling with her hair. And the crew is putting fucking wigs on again. What is the fascination with wigs? No on one this looks show? good in these wigs. They all lost two points. Boy, I'm sounding like a real fucking pig tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it was all that uh, quality father daughter time. If only we knew the origin of the wigs. If we had a preference sheet meeting, mm. why? God? It's just weird. Like I feel like the white party is now uh, in our rear view, but now there are these. I feel like the wigs come up. I don't know. Every three episodes or something, somebody's got a fucking wig on. It's weird. Mm. We're talking about Fifth Element a couple of weeks ago. You know. <laughs> uh, I think this will really. Uh, push people to the video but check out this comparison scarlet and e's girlfriend oh, well, yeah. from episode one of entourage is that not crazy yeah they're similar all I'm right sorry, so Nick, uh the serial murderer sits down with the women and is just crushing it with the wig humor and i imagine this dinner was hard for him um being around a lot of women in sequins a common pattering of his victims <laughs> you know yeah I don't 
Let's get to the food. First up, duck breast cooked to, I mean, I just cannot fucking speak tonight. Duck breast cooked to a <clears throat> pink and beautiful rosy medium. You could take that bird to 125 because ducks don't really carry salmonella. They're a beautiful bird, a beautiful metaphor as well. Um, but these people would have just quacked at that kind of preparation. Hey, D- Dylan, what are your oh, thoughts man. on this? They, they treated eating some fucking duck like they were going to, I don't know, eat a frog that was barely cooked or a fucking kangaroo. Well, I get know, it. It's cute. It walks around, goes quack, yeah. quack, quack. Yeah. And you might have, it's delicious though. Yeah. And it's served in 50% of restaurants. Think of all the Chinese fare yeah. and most high end restaurants. The best preparation of duck is probably Chinese. Mm-hmm. Wait, what the fuck? Peking. Their palates are, they're pigs. All of these people? Yeah, they're pigs. One of them compared, they were eating something like, hey, this is just like P.F. Chang's. Well, we'll get to the tempura green beans and P.F. Chang's later. So, um, the duck is served with fig and blue cheese uh, for some and not for others. Scarlet fucks this up, obviously, and then we get to surf and turf. And I've got to say, not a crowning achievement for Marcos. This is Andy's hotel shit. Um, or what, what was that place in Beverly Hills called? I'm sorry. Andes, Andes Hotel. Oh, Andes, yeah. Yeah, Led Zeppelin was driving the Motorcycles. Uh, on our last episode of Real Housewives, we cover a dinner menu that the um, uh, tongue-blind women of that show were served that evening to the tune of $200 a oh, person. Oh, I love this. Oh, my God. You're using saffron in the risotto? Where did you get that? Gelson's. <laughs> Idiots. So, um... <laughs> The one in blue is shit face says, let's eat with our nuts out. Can we move on? Yeah. I hate people who have to say the joke that like everybody's thinking like they all thought she said nuts. That's why everybody's, but she had to say it. You're uncomfortable. You're not funny and put the booze down. Hey, put the booze down a little bit. Okay. Uh, we get 700 shots of this fucking dessert, a bizarre amount of camera coverage for this dessert. Was this the deconstructed chocolate cake? Yes. Um, all right. I, you know, I don't know anything about food, but right. I, you know, I watch enough iron chef bullshit and, uh, and, uh, beat Bobby flay. And they're always like, Oh, this is a deconstructed, whatever the fuck. No, it's not. Yeah. It's a fucking piece of chocolate on a fucking cracker with yeah. some uh, Flamin Vom or whatever. Again, Flamin Vom. I don't, Vom, I don't yeah. know what the fuck it is. But you don't get to just make up the rules. There should be some laws in, in cooking. How many? Uh, how many? Oh, well, Patrick, there are. Does he get to call this a deconstructed chocolate cake? Well, I call it's more it, like a fucking s'more let's to Let's not me. get into the debate about whether or not there are rules in cooking. I call it ingredients. Oh my Not gosh. APS, I got to talk about this weekend. We we went up to a, a beautiful Burmese restaurant called The Duchess in uh, in Ojai. Uh, we were taken there by one of my uh, wife's cousin's friends uh, who used to be a chef for um, Paul Bianco or Chris Bianco, the, the pizza guy. And they, we got a whole tour of the kitchen, sat mm-hmm. down for some treats on the house, a couple cocktails. We were an hour and a half late to meet the family, and our wives were extremely fucking angry. But, you know, 15 minutes in, we realized they were already at a 10. So let's hang out and just enjoy yep. the treatment. You yeah, know? Exactly. Yeah. It's insanely selfish of them to try to ruin your time. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that sentence. That's what I said. I've that, never seen you happier. You were reflecting upon that. That is it your It was heaven. unbelievable. We got to go through everything. I was asking him how much the oven was. He was letting <laughs> us sample the mise en place. I was like, what are those? They're like, they're fermented tea leaves. I was like, can I try some? He was like, of course. Use the tasting spoons. Try to put it in the This the is gross the dude t- that had the place that started in Arizona that Jimmy Kimmel fell in well, love with? Well, no, that was. <clears throat> you know that our, guy, too? That was our friend Cam's boss. Oh, okay. And his Cam's friend had started this restaurant called The Duchess, owned and operated by the people who own Rustic Canyon in Santa Monica. It's just a marvelous place. But hey, well, let's get back to l- Hold show. on, little tease for me. This yeah. is why you got to listen to APS. You got to support us over there. Uh, this is the second time in 2022 I got to hang out without my wife and go out with some of my boys and do a little day drinking. And uh, boys, 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 boys. I came home like a drunken sailor. I'll tell that tale. The wife was not pleased with me. Yeah, you were pissed on shit rosé, right? Sparkling, yeah. And also, I'm going to get Dylan and Pat's takes on one of the current hottest internet debates. Stay tuned. How many pots do you give this? Let's- Zero. Well, Pat, really, though, let's take an earnest crack oh, at this. Oh, the entire uh, meal? Yeah. Oh. You can go, too. A hundred meats back to back. I right. love that. Just shut up. <laughs> Dinner is over, and Gary is still flirting with an inexhaustible fervor. Well, Dylan, I don't know if you caught this. <laughs> this guy is... Uh, 
He's insatiable. Well, this is what his whole life is about. Yeah. You know, when I was a sorry, forgive me, beep that, Brian. I don't want to sound offensive. Do I have uh, to beep it in the audio? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, my buddy McRitchie gonna... said, this is in my younger years. He goes, you know what, Pat? You have no real hobbies. Chasing girls is your hobby. Yeah. And that's shallow. Yeah. Gary's Pat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he says. Sick rep cam. Nick's going to be useless in uh, two hours. I'm not. It's my first hit of the day. I'll okay. be fine. I feel like I'm very boring. Gary pulls <laughs> Scholar aside and he says, there's definitely chemistry. Okay. And I was thinking, did the uh, definition of uh, chemistry suddenly change to, uh, I'd like to drop a load on you okay. while you're bent over a bed and then <laughs> move right. on. My God, we're gonna have to beep a lot of stuff tonight. It's not his fault. It's the transcripts. Maybe they should clean up their language on the boat. So, um, Gary picks easy marks. Not easy as in like sex positivity. I mean easy as in like, like uh, dumb. Well, yeah, susceptible to his charm. Which, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying it. Yeah, I, they're fucking sea rats. I yeah? actually, I actually think Scarlet is a little more cunning than we may give her. Like, it looks. Oh, she's falling for Gary. She's, this, she, she came in late. She's super hot. She wants to be on TV. She's probably got an OnlyFans cooking. Uh, nice. I think she's. I think she's playing the game pr pretty well. I think we we taken liberties with the word cunning uh, mm. sometimes. Um, I'm just going to agree to disagree. Uh, she came on and she's uh, being duped by Gary. So um, got to play the game. Cunning need not be a word used. <laughs> you All can right. talk tonight. So insatiable um, fervor. We get um, an incredible dude prank at the end of the night. I mean, this is, <laughs> I just, this is fun stuff. Dude, I just love seeing those three fellas. We are, of course, talking about Marcos, Colin, and Gary sharing a bunk and Marcos knocking on his bedside, making Gary think that Scarlett was at the door and Gary hopping out of bed like the hornball that he is. Yeah. But man, I just love I seeing this it. dude's sl slumber party, them just talking about chicks and all the weird Fill stuff. Fill it up with this stuff, the girls and the guys. And I mean, I know we get that from time to time but um i don't think that we get enough of it mm -hmm. no no to bravo the it's camaraderie or yes exactly up. especially tonight would have been an awesome time to get a little bit more of that perfect for tonight um next episode we'll probably see gary and scarlet uh getting into more trouble perhaps they could be using dame dame my gosh guys you know we've had the dame products for long enough um they are beautiful, beautiful products. Beautiful, beautiful products. They have the Eva. It is the first hands-free vibrator. Men need not apply. Just step back and watch the robots take over. Um, <clears throat> they also have pH uh, balanced to the vagina lube, which is like crazy stuff. You know, your partner will be like, wow, this feels incredible because the pH is completely in unison with the inner lining of my uh vulva so God, i'm always so bad at these ones these ad reads it's amazing that you do it off the cuff though don't <laughs> is it <laughs> i've got this one it's an easy sell i don't know how much my girlfriend wants to share about the bedroom but let's just say she's fucking for dame all right mm -hmm. we had to order more products i had to run to that website i was dame dash Wow. Hey, uh, I think some of our female audience, hey, why don't you show off how free you are sexually? Why don't you make a purchase, right? And then just post oh, on no. Facebook. No, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. God damn it. No. Fuck. We already got our Facebook, our Below Deck Facebook group dinged in a warn from what? the Zuck because someone said they wanted to punch Chef Ryan. And we can't have women pleasuring themselves. Well, that would what get are us you talking sure. about? You're talking about women po posting pictures of them using Dame products. Inappropriate, not what we want. But also, what what is the alternative? Smiley pics next to the product? Like, hey, we're going to use this later. I mean, it was such a bad idea, man. Fuck, man. All right, but you know what a good idea is? Go to dameproducts.com. Use promo code below deck for 15% off. Go to dameproducts.com. Enter in promo code for 15% off. So let's get back to the show, guys. I mean, what a show it is. Um, <laughs> Not really. That, that's just um, 
that's just kind of empty words uh, so that I can... Yeah, you're filling space. I can navigate my Google Drive here, yeah. Where so are we? We are. I'll tell you exactly where we are. Next We're morning. rising for the next morning. We've got more going through the motion shit from Below Deck. Uh, again, uh, Glenn accuses the guests of being fucked up in the morning. Whoa, man. That might not go over too well. Yeah. It was pretty intense. I think he felt, he felt some camaraderie that I guess is there. Uh, with the women the night before, but um, pretty intense move early on going, you're so drunk, you're crawling on the ground. Look at you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he you're tells... You're looking down, slit your throat. <laughs> that's tells... what I like to do to women. He tells the uh, girls that uh, there is no wind, so we are going to be sending you into the fucking ocean somewhere. Um, alas, they do find a way to get in said water. They want to hop in the tendy and head out to the clear blue, and that's when Gary hatches a bit of a plan. Now, actually, I was I couldn't even remember this during my thoughts and knots. This little thing, this little coup it was by fun. Gary, this general, this generalship uh, by generalship and a thwarting by the. Napoleonic character that is Daisy, mm -hmm. but it it's still like you said the general he's got he's he's playing chess that still worked in his favor yes. her thwarting it and yes. then getting upset they got to what spend are we talking time about with... maybe we should break it down well yeah yeah so okay all right so uh, Pat break it down all right so Gary uh, really wants to flirt with Scarlet all day long while probably sneaking some booze in so he uh, says hey why don't I take Scarlet along do service Daisy says why the fuck do you need service it's gonna be you on a skiff driving around and they're gonna go swimming and I don't think they're a bunch of fucking drunks so they're not going to need a, a person taking care of drinks for two hours yeah she says i'll tell you what though i'll one-up you motherfucker <laughs> yeah uh, i'm not gonna let you finger bang scarlet when no one's looking right. i will do the drink service yeah. the only person getting finger banged at this tender ride is me gary that's what Daisy hey said. are they official someone hey, posted should that we they're stop a couple. using the word finger bang no it's it's the kids love it it's just com uh, common common uh, say lingo. it again the kids love it the kids love it it's, I'm it's gonna common finger lingo bang bang you no, into my life i'm gonna no, no, finger no, bang no. bang you every night all right south park so i thought it was bts the male pmz uh pms is sexual frustration we get very temperamental and we throw fits like the one that Gary just threw oh. here. Um, I just he, don't think you care about the service. Oh, and he can't. He finds out that he's not going to be able to rub the inside of Scarlet's leg while they wait for people to snorkel. He that's gets code for finger bang. Pissed mm -hmm. off. Uh, so what we will have is Gary and Daisy sitting in a tree. S e r v i n g, serving. That works better, right? I've been, I've been so bad at those. I really tried to. You know, I asked my wife about this because my wife's pretty snooty. And I said, uh, I don't think they need uh, Daisy to go on this thing. It could just be Gary. And she's like, no, not if you're trying to be like top notch service. You would have someone out there I making think so cocktails. Too. Yeah. That's so, why I was so impressed by Gary's move. Like, even when uh, <clears throat> Daisy was telling him, you don't need that, he's like, fine. I just thought it'd be easier for the guest. Just thought it'd be easier for the guest. Thought it'd be yeah. for Retro. I don't need her. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Do you recall? Genius move. He's unflappable. Yeah. yeah, he really is. He's like, it's fine. We don't need to do five star service here, Daisy. <laughs> Who are other famous generals? <laughs> Lee? Uh, Napoleon? Napoleon, <clears throat> Hitler. Patton? Hitler was pretty. I don't know if he was really a general, but McCarthy. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot of American ones. Schwarzkopf. You're good at this. You are good at this. You know a lot of generals. Colin Powell. Ulysses S. Grant. We he said him? that. No, no, you didn't say that. I haven't said any. All right. So Ashley. Oh, Mills. Ashley is back at the boat, shitting on Scarlet and blaming her for her exhaustion. Just what an evil little creature. So we head back to the boat, but um, I have before we do, but we already did all of our ads tonight. God, aren't you guys lucky? So um, Glenn hatches a hell of a plan. He says, you see that boat over there? This is when you know. This is literally jumping the shark. Let's race this motherfucker. Yeah. So uh, let's move on to Scarlett and <clears throat> Ashley talk. Um Ashley gives Scarlet some pretty good advice here that obviously Scarlet will not listen to. She says, if you want to go ahead and sexually assault a guy who's not even going to remember it, then you be my guest. Scarlet said, I wasn't going to. What are you talking about? Well, also, I want to say this. Ashley wants to know what's up with her and Gary, and Scarlet says Gary's been really hitting on her hard. Yeah. Which is 100% true. However, she does admit that she uh, is definitely uh, uh, reciprocating, if you will. 
Little, we're going to cover that, I assume, on the reunion. It's kind of like a, a lie, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, Scarlet falls deeper into this fly trap and is so digmatized that she receives a bit of a demerit, or so we thought, from Daisy when she is caught watching the sunset with Gare Bear. Hey, go fold some towels. Yeah, That's Daisy's right. pretty ornery right here, but not at Scarlet. She's pissed at Gary, and Scarlet receives the brunt of this venting. And here is where I began to get a little concerned about Scarlet. Um, you know me. I don't like boy crazy because I don't think boys are deserving of boy crazy. And Scarlet is boy crazy here. Mm -hmm. She's like, where did this come from? Scarlet Dylan sounds like a dad of a teenage girl. <laughs> a little bit. I'm just like, Scarlet, listen to her. She's telling you everything that's happening. Maybe you should, I don't know, pay attention to the machinations of the scumbag who's trying to fuck you. But just like a teenage uh, daughter who's being lectured to by her father, both <sighs> Daisy and Ashley are only driving Scarlet into her arms. Sure. Like, when when mm -hmm. Ashley's like, oh, he's a piece of shit. You don't want him. Ashley should have been like... Uh, oh, yeah, I think you guys are so cute together. Gary keeps talking about how he sees something long-term with you and he's in love with you. <laughs> right. That would have dried her up real quick. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then Daisy's like completely in a tizzy and Scarlett's thinking, what's he got in there that's making these women go crazy? Yes. Yeah. No, she has to find out. She has to dive into that filthy cenote to see what is at the bottom. <laughs> Com uh, uh, competi competition is a natural aphrodisiac. <laughs> Yeah, so is fear. And cenotes, which I've just recently learned about, are immaculate. What are you talking about? Well, in... Um, Love is blind? No, cenotes are going downhill. Um, Shitbag Shake is a huge fan of them. They're chuggy now. Yeah, if, the, if I know about it, it's it's, it's, tr it's now become like trash is flocking. Right, there. yeah, mm. exactly. So um, let's get to dinner. And forgive me, I'm not going to be... There's not a lot of humor here. It's just... We want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Now. It's just decent food. Okay. So first up, we've got uh, gazpacho and a loose. It's, it's gazpacho. It's bacon and eggs on top. It's a moose boost. Just eat the quail egg. It's fine. Second, we've got beets and mangra, uh, mango with microgreens and hazelnut to accompany. Of course, the beets and goat cheese are a hit. What are we at the Ivy in 2009? I mean, my <laughs> God. Hey, can I do a quick uh, meanwhile to break it up? Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, uh, the one that's wearing Woody's hat from Toy Story. She looks ridiculous. <laughs> he really wants to fuck Marcos. Yeah, so there's a hell of a theme here with dinner. <laughs> Not in any of the food. It's really kind of um, mismatched and all over the place. We've got macho. We've got surf and turp. We've got, I just can't fucking talk to them. The one that's into Marcos is like, there's a snake in his pants. <laughs> I want that snake in his pants. <laughs> and he's very homoerotic. So um, next up, we've got penne regatta, tomatoes, uh, garlic, parsley. You know, senior at UCLA. Hmm. Um, next up, we've got Dover sole, a marvelous fish. I've talked about the romanticism oh, yeah. of this dish many times. Next up, uh, salmon and chipotle aioli. Yuck. Um, and here is where it really, really ramps up the uh, jacuzzi talk, the dick talk, the spicy, <laughs> spicy stuff. Uh, but we've got more food. Uh, it's filet and another pepper sauce. Um, and we've also got green bean tempura, you know, because you go from classic French cooking to P.F. Chang's <laughs> appetizers. I mean, what is going on here with this fucking meal? I want to. It's all up, over the map. I op want to open up a new new rap theme steak restaurant and call it hip hop filet. Hey, so, Dylan, uh, yeah. um, is, is it up to the chef to set a, a theme with the dinner guests at the top? Because it just seemed like, hey, I'm going to throw, I'm going to sling some fucking pasta at you, yeah. some fucking fish on a plate, some uh, some offerings from the appetizer menu yeah, from P.F. Yeah, Chang's, yeah, yeah. and you're going to love it. You know, I got to be transparent with you here. Okay. I was so distracted by Nick's, um, Nick was clenching his, clenching his fists like Arthur, like that Arthur meme, when he did that um, filet hip hop thing. Oh no, there's, <laughs> there's separate things. I've picked my, I've, oh, I've okay. got. Uh, oh, well nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to hear about it. Can we just be cute? But I, I just have to explain them. What, what do you, hangnails. I've got hangnails. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, nobody hurt. wants to hear about and, that. And so I just, pr I just press them to like, yeah, kind of. Okay, so um, moving on. What did you say, Pat? 
Oh, I was just shouldn't there be a filet. theme? Shouldn't there be a theme to this uh, dinner? Yes, there should be some loose theme, not surrounding uh, sexual advances. Mm. Um, so next up, we've got wagyu ribeye. There's the beef. There's <laughs> the beef. Accompanied by a little bit more smut. The one in the hat says she wants Marcos to be the dessert. <laughs> Whoa, spicy! <laughs> These women's bro. Uh, dessert. And course nine, lemon sorbet and mint. This should come a little bit earlier in the dinner, Marcos. What is going on? And we get a little bit more spice. Um, meow. Oh, my God. I don't know what to write anymore. <laughs> um, finally, we've got matcha tiramisu to top off a very confusing knuckleball of the culinary arts. Um, 75 pots because I, I mean, like, the can-do attitude yeah. is such an elevating it has an elevating weight to it, it we can, want him to succeed yes and it, he can dupe you into thinking that he didn't serve a sizzler buffet of <laughs> <laughs> food but is that like i mean 80 plates like that's isn't it's that, a lot it's, it's a, a lot. lot no it's it, the the quantity is the difficulty yeah it was so oh go ahead Nick. just but when people get three michelin stars because the quantity is met with the quality. Three Michelin Oh, the quality is met with Yeah, the when you go to three Michelin so they crush you with 20 courses, but <clears throat> How many courses good. did Kiko get? Uh I mean they they almost like Kiko? That that first one they oh, were the like The Vegas night? Uh no, 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 no. He did, <laughs> he pulled off this multi-course meal and everybody's like, "Wow, this guy's great." And then he served Mokeka 75 more times and yeah. giant fudge well, domino. Well, if you remember his undoing <laughs> microaggression. Was, was a Vegas night. That was yeah. part of the Vegas night. <laughs> Um, fried fish I love <laughs> dude everybody likes to party on the strip Nachos. everybody likes to party on the strip go clubbing in Vegas yeah. I like to just go sit down I can be by myself find a nice dealer and play some dominoes till the wee hours of the morning yeah right. I love how ubiquitous dominoes is on the floor on the floors of so many hotels in Las Vegas um you're kidding right yes okay um yeah I mean I, I my favorite thing about that Vegas night was Hannah's um, absolving herself of guilt. She's like, <laughs> she's been to Vegas three times when she was 19, 22, and 23. And he's like, what do they eat in Vegas? She's like, chicken tenders, White Castle, mac and cheese. <laughs> and they're black, so you should throw up some domino brownies. <laughs> I love when Captain fake Captain Timeshare Sandy walked over to Kiko. She's like, why did you do this? <laughs> And Hannah like, told me. And it's like, I have no fucking idea <laughs> why you did it either. <laughs> How should I know? <laughs> okay. So Gary, um, he comes in with a little apology to Daisy and a little sexual attention to Butte. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Um, sure enough, Scarlett views this <clears throat> as competition pulling ahead of her. I am not liking this boy crazy, but we <laughs> rise for... The next, up, the next day and a little race. Um, breakfast is skipped and Bloody Marys are served just in time for them to shatter all over the fucking teak. But we're going to find out who wins the anticlimactic race next week. Oh, Pull you're it around the barn. Pull it around the barn. We get to a little race. That you're talking about the regatta. I thought someone said the N-word again. So jump in the iTunes, write your reviews, let us know five stars, and do it. Come on. Come on. Do it. Go to patreon.com. Slash the podcast network for ad free shows, PMZ, APS, Housewives. We are putting out more content than any Patreon in the history of this wonderful company has ever done. It's fucking crazy. Join us on July 13th at the Irvine Improv with Kate Casey and even more special guests. We'll see you next week. I'm Dylan saying goodbye. Nick say goodbye. Goodbye. Pat say goodbye. Later, dudes. <laughs>